Season last year, not, didn't, didn't quite get the mission done, but a great one, I guess. How, how would you, you know, looking back, what, what are your thoughts on it? Man, I feel like I was, uh, I was personally I'm biased as hell. So uh, I feel like I was winning most of the rounds and, you know, got stopped in the fourth. So I feel like I, you know, I, had, I, I, I was winning a race and tripped at the finish line, so to speak. I um, feel like he, he did his best job to best me in, in, in that round and, uh, you know, just excited for the season to start again to get that opportunity again you know six months of hard focus uh, i believe we can not only be back in the same seat but be holding the belt at the end of the year so uh, that's uh, the goal well it took a pretty special performance from him to, to, to get it done so i guess did he surprise maybe even you because i think a lot of people say that's the best he's ever looked um I don't, I, don't, I don't think anything that was surprising um we worked on the leg kicks i had my shins rolled out for leg kicks um, you know, the takedown attempts were, you know, we weren't going to force anything, but we we're definitely looking for some different things. But like I said, um, he put on a hell of a performance. Uh, it, it definitely was worth a million dollars for him because um, I'm no easy feat to beat. And I was in the right place, the right time. I felt great. Conditioning, everything was beautiful. And uh, yeah, we just didn't come away with the victory as we wanted. But, you know, bad man tings all over again. And we run tings, tings don't run we. So we at it again. I love it. Uh I mean, pretty quick turnaround when you think about it, right? I mean, especially knowing like the kind of grind the year can be. So I'm just curious, like mentally, has it been tough to like reset and be like, all right, we got to start at the bottom of the mountain again and work the way up? Like, how challenging has it been? Um, as a as a challenge as a, as a champion, as a challenger, as a as someone who's competed, it definitely was a little rough to restart. You know, being that you know you know the work that it takes to get to that opportunity, and when you're at that stage. The balance is so delicate, you know, uh, everything that goes into the fight can play into it, you know, the way they treat you leading up, you know, the, what corner you walk out in, the songs that are played, everything is such a delicate balance at that point that, you know, you just you just hope it goes your way. And it didn't, so we are motivated, um, you know, inspired for sure, um, but also, I don't think that I've had the wars in the fight game that a lot of people have had for as long as I've been in the fight game. I, you know, I'm a beautiful 35 and I don't got a gray hair on me. So, you know, the fact that I can restart it, um, be in the right mindset again to say, you know what, I, I don't know how many of those guys are, are motivated to run it back like that season again, but I'm probably one of the most motivated because I was so close and, and never came away with it. That's awesome. So the time in between has it been more about recovery and, and just getting yourself healthy and ready or ha are there have been things that you've wanted to tweak that you're like all right here's what we got to get better at like what's the focus been well we definitely tweak some things um i need more orthodox standing um because if i was a little bit more orthodox standing i wouldn't have the knot on my shin that i still have to this moment um being in south paul and him tearing that leg up i didn't see the numbers but if I was going to go off my head, I probably got kicked in that leg probably 64 times or something. Um, and he probably, he probably did. I mean, I literally, I have a shield on my leg now that is, is the hematoma that has healed and has rock solid it. So um, thanks to him, I am more dangerous on that side. But um, yeah, no, I wanted to have more offense uh, from my other, uh, other offensive stances. Um, I wanted to be more crisp with my punching. I, I saw a couple of punches that just, just just missed. I mean, that had all the all the million dollar intentions on him, and uh, that you know he did a great job of just getting out of the way. So you know, a part of me is trying to locate where he was slipping to this year, and um, and anybody else who's who moves like him, and just being more dynamic in in, in my striking. Um, I I probably could have forced my wrestling a little bit more. Um, I, I feel like I lost the championship from lack of composure and lack of focus um, after that. Uh, you know, legal shot that I took, you know, I didn't take the time to reset and stay composed, you know, the, I felt like in the fight, while we were fighting, everything was going beautifully, music was playing and we were dancing in a, in a wonderful dance. And as soon as I got kicked and the music stopped and we stopped, my legs started screaming at me, my body started screaming at me, the ref was screaming at me not to talk to Dewey who was screaming at me. So um, there was a lot going on and had I, you know, in a sense, stay composed, took a deep breath, recalculated. I feel like, you know, we could have walked away with a better ending. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm focused on all of those things.
sometimes. You know, the ultimate goal is to, to get to the end, right? But when they announced the first matchup for you, what were your thoughts? Were you excited about it? I mean, it's a fight that kind of had to happen, right? No, it definitely is a fight that's got to happen. Like, <laughs> we got to run it back, you know? That's a thing. I don't believe I was the same. Bubba, Jesse, Badman, Jenkins, anybody, any names of those were, I was not that guy on the first time me and Wade fought. And uh, a little bit of a part of me believes, he believes that I was. He believes that, you know, I was, I beat a really good, really in shape, you know, and, and that's just not the case. So I'm, I'm hoping to show him a, a, a new and better and improved Bubba Jenkins. Um, I really didn't see it as an ad, that advantageous thing for me. Um, you know, I, I kind of see it as, damn, PFL, y'all don't give your boy a break at all. Hey, welcome to the PFL. Why don't you take on our two-time champion in Lance Palmer? Hey, welcome to the PFL. Why don't you take on ex-veteran Kyle Boshiak on an eight-day notice randomly as you're getting ready for the tall Korean guy take on this random Boshiak dude who's definitely a tough fighter. Oh, again, yeah, welcome back to the PFL. Why don't you take on our two-time semifinalist, another finalist. Oh, okay, you know, so... But, you know, me being a bad man, it's always bad man things. Anybody can get it. Everybody go and get it. Um, the thing about Chris Wade is um, I just have to go back to that place of staying composed. He has a haircut and a smile that makes me angry. <laughs> so um, I'm not too, too uh, fond of the fact that I know that I'll have to temper my emotions. Um, but it is a part of why I feel like I didn't win the championship. So um, my Lord chastens those that he loves and I feel like if I continue to go back to correcting myself and becoming a better person, better fighter, better everything, then I, you know, I can come away with having more composure and being less emotional. Even though I try to give the fans what they want and give them the antics and laughing and having a good time, Damn it, I need that million dollars. <laughs> well, that's the thing for me, I think you kind of touched on there because I was kind of curious, like, when you look at this fight, do you look at this as like, this is personal and I got a statement to make? Or it's like, hey, this is just a guy and I just need to get six points and get myself into the playoffs, you know what I mean? No, hell no, this is personal and I got a statement to make. Um, I can't even fake it, you know, last thing that we, last mistake that we made was thinking that the championship fight was any other fight, that there wasn't going to be emotions, that there wasn't going to be lows and highs, you know, so, to kind of manipulate staying calm and being, uh, you know, composed, we kind of fake that factor. You know, it's just a regular fight, you know, just keep going, no. But it's it's more intense. And with this training camp, we have practiced at an intense rate. We have emotionally got invested into it so that we can practice him saying the wrong thing or looking the wrong way and then me going, oh no, I'll stay composed and then going, what you say, you know, so there's a part of me that is the bad man and there's a part of me that is trying to stay in a Jesse-like mindset so that I can smoothly walk my way into a victory. But yes, it's personal. Um, I won't fake it. If he hits me, I, I'm going to bite down on my mouthpiece and try to not only hit him but knock him unconscious. So I'm going to be playing into that as I go into training and as I go into everything that leads up to that week. Hey Bubba, the, the first fight was kind of heated. Are you ready for the, the trash talk and just yeah. the back and forth? That's exactly what I was just saying. Um, you know, coach has done a good job of getting fighters in my in my in, in the room that are you know a little bit hard to kick, catch. You know, a little bit karate like. You know, and I'm a guy that's just like no stand here and let's get it. You know, even with the Brandon Lockney fight. I'm not the striker, but I stood in the middle like, no, nah, bro, let's do this whole striking thing we spoke about, you know, and I don't really want to use my wrestling, but you're making me, right? <laughs> so um, we have definitely put in the ideal that is going to be some trash talking. He's going to say something disrespectful. Um, he might even bring my children up. I don't think he's that type of guy, but just to get under my skin, people know that if you do something like that, you could possibly take my focus, and that's something that I want to I want to correct as I sit. So you don't like his haircut, so should he shave his head or what's up? I don't like his face. <laughs> I don't like the way he breathes. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he laughs. I don't like the way he cries. I don't like the way he fights. I don't like anything about Chris Wade, period. Not where he's from, not where he's going. <laughs> There's nothing about Chris Wade that I can actually say other than that he's got a great, an amazing, an amazing management team. <laughs> um, and then uh, finally, there's been some more uh, <coughs> college wrestlers come in, and as a as a credentialed wrestler yourself, yeah. why is it 
do you think more college wrestlers are coming to MMA? We're the baddest of the baddest of athletes. Um, you know, the grind is very similar. It's 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 right down our alley of how we already lived. You know, um, and it's almost like learning another part of wrestling when you add kickboxing mixed martial arts because we're learning how to get off bottom we're learning how to take people down we're learning how to ride people on top you know there's different nuances to each part of the wrestling game that you have to add so when you're like okay add top add bottom add takedowns add kicks add punches no you're a fighter and it's just like oh just add a couple more things and now of course being in the game i know it i know it is not that easy to just add punches add kicks and know what you're doing you know but um, I believe because of our mindset and because of what we've already been through, we we have the best chances to be in uh, to be successful. And I believe takedowns and wrestling mindset helps you, you know, win a fight. Fighters generally come from a the champion fighters generally come from a, a wrestling background. If you well, look at the numbers, what do you think of Bo Nichols' debut? <sighs> um, I thought it was a successful debut. I thought that. Um, they are doing a good job of bringing wrestling to the forefront of mixed martial arts. Um, I, I, I know, I know for sure he's going to be a good fighter, but I, I know he needs a lot more work. I believe it's too quick. Um, even in my beginning career, I rushed to the forefront of Bellator a little too quick. And had I had, you know, maybe better people in my corner who knew more about the sport to say, hey, let's let's go a little bit slower because. Once you fall from here, that fall is precipitous. Once you leave the NBA, once you leave the NFL, it's only arena leagues after this, right? Except for the fact that we are growing in, in, in other organizations that, that can speak for great shows, great fights, like the PFL, you know, but once you get on that main stage and you're at the top, at the highest, when you're not prepared for it, that fall hurts. And it could come very quickly. Thank you. Yeah. Just one for me. How do you find the balance? You talk about uh, keeping composure, the maturation of what you learned after last season, but then you go into a guy like Wave where you want to have that aggression, you want to have that thoughts. How do you find that balance to where you don't get too engaged in the emotions and keep that composure? You you manufacture it as far as you know putting it into your training. You know, coach is like, Bub, I need you a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more mad. You know, and I and I and I do my best to do it, Cooper. That was pretty good. Doing Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he, 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 he having a good coach reminds you to, you know, not rest on your lulls, not act like it's lackadaisical. I need you a little bit more intense. I need you a little bit more fired up. You know, I need you, uh, hey, let's put on some DMX. Let's put on some, you know, hard music so you, you can have that intensity, bub. So, you know, let's get, let's get it going. I love the dude. <laughs> I got a good one. I didn't know I had a good one, but I got a good one. So um, it's honestly just listening to your corner and, and, and trying to find – what you know it's going to feel like. The thing about me having a fault, Chris Wade, as I have seen and I know what it looks like to be in front of him under the light, sweating and, and wanting to hit him or wanting to do that. So knowing that, analyzing that, you try to bottle it and you try to, you know, make sure that throughout the camp you bring that out so you can, so it's not a foreign thing when it happens. So it's not new and you're not gassed off the anxiety of something that may or may go left or right. You, you had said that uh, you're not the same fighter that fought Wade. Um, he's not the same fighter that fought you. So how are you able to address that instead of focusing on what he was, what you know, what you see as him as a fighter now? Um, Y'all know me, man. Batman versus Batman. I, I, I have focused on him because he is my p opponent. Um, I have looked at it because there's an intensity that you know will rise regardless of what I want it to be, and there's an anxiety there that you know s most people won't um, admit to. But I'm a real fighter, and it's all about me. I don't really look at Chris Wade into the things that he's good at or, or the things that make him win this fight. I look at why I'm going to win this fight and, and the things that I'm good at. So the pressure is going to be on Chris Wade to try to beat me, while my pressure is just to be me. You said that they, they've given you nothing but tough fights since you've been here, but if you were able to pick your opponent for the for the first round of this, would, would he be the one you'd want? Uh, no, I would want Chris Wade when it, when it mattered a little bit more. I would want Chris Wade when it mattered so, so it hurts a little bit more. Because <laughs> um, cause he got me when it mattered, actually, you know, so, you know, so I, I would like to get it back in all the revenge that it is, um, but I'm not looking for revenge, I'm looking for correction. Um, but 
Yeah, I think that was, I'm gonna leave him on a statement. That was a good statement. I'm not looking for revenge, I'm looking for a correction. <laughs> last one for me, I've been around Dewey for 15 years now. I've always said he's the most intense individual I've ever been around. Yeah. How does his energy rub off on you? I know you guys yeah. obviously work very closely together. So, so what's his energy like? For you man it's you? it's the lap 11 on a 10 lap sprint you know he is that extra pump that extra motivation um he's a cheat code he makes me feel like i felt when i was in high school when with my high school coach if he was in the corner i knew we had a massive advantage just off an experience off of energy off of anointing and vibrations i knew that you know I was advantageous with that man in my corner and it's the same feeling that i get with dewey um knowing that he's there. I actually am happy that he travels so much to go with other fighters because I know when you see him and when you're walking out, that kind of warrior mindset, you look him in the eyes right before you walk out and you, you have an agreement that you're both in it together and that's something that you know you don't get from everyone. That's something you know he's invested, you know he's literally bled, you know you almost clipped him a couple of times during mids and stuff like that, but he's right there and he, and he goes nowhere. And the fact that he's there for so many people customized there for so many people. He doesn't say the same thing that he would say to Marvin as he does to O'Day, as he does to me, as he does to other fighters. And he has an individualistic care for each person. And when you see that, you want to win for him. You want to, you want to win for him. And I'm definitely looking to try to get him that championship belt from PFL. Thanks. To your right, you mentioned kind of balancing or, or having a better connection with your emotions during the fight. And how fine is that line for you? Because you have to make sure that it doesn't overtake you, right. but you have to be able to take advantage of it. Did you work with anybody special to actually help you? Uh, along those lines. I got back into my Bible a little bit more. Um, it is not just a thin line. It almost is the same mixed line. Um, you know, you do well with those emotions. You can see that it propels you to success and propels you to being, you know, who I am. You know, that's Bubba Jenkins when I'm having a good time and laughing or, you know, just, you know, celebrating or, or, or doing my antics. I'm just me. I don't, I don't try to hide or be fake. Um, so it's a thin line of that, but it's also like knowing that, you know, there are times where I allowed my focus inside the cage and outside the cage to hamper me, and 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 it didn't, it did not add. It wasn't advantageous for me to, to try to blur those things. So yeah, um, as I'm getting into training, as I'm more mature in the fight game, I sit down and I and I try to analyze where I can be more calm, where I can be less emotional, and just secret words inside my head while I'm training that keep me in in that place. When I was in high school, my coach would always say. Treat it like practice, treat it like practice, because I could go for seven hours straight and practice. But the anxiety of me being this great wrestler and then stepping out on the mat had me in a place where I would crash a little bit conditioning wise because of the anxiety of everyone watching and newspapers and everything. So there was like a, an anxiety there. And as I've analyzed who I was then, it's like, okay, let me try to figure out how to temper this and how to control this and you know I've worked with different people over the years but mostly it's about you know going to prayer going to going to my bible and seeing a place where I can have that peace that uh, surpasses all understanding you mentioned Bo Nickel maybe moving along too fast and you mentioned kind of maybe you move along too fast in your Bellator um, career as well what would you say to yourself maybe 10 years ago about kind of being a businessman instead of being in this business man Right, man, that's a statement. Um, I would have said to definitely, there's a long career ahead. You know, you don't have to rush to the forefront to tell everybody you can fight. People know I'm a national champion. People know that if it gets ugly, I can fight, I can scrap. But to actually be able to do it when the lights are on, when you have so much going on and going against a skilled opponent is a different thing. And to balance that is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a mastery of itself. And some people who are immature they just want to start, you know. If I was a red shirt freshman in college and I just wanted so much to start, to start. I didn't care if it was up away class, I didn't care when it was during the season. I just wanted to start. I just wanted to get my position, I want to show my shine, I want to make my bones, I want to get out there. Um, but to to really be at that stage that you need to be on, you need to go in the back room and 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 prove to yourself and, and prove to the people in your circle that you can not only live a championship like lifestyle, but become that champion. Awesome. Bing. Bye, man.